welcome to another edition of TCDM Talks. I'm here with Dr. Rick Workman, who is the founder and executive chairman of Heartland Dental. Thank you for coming. I'm honored to be here. We'll start with, why don't you tell us what the Heartland model is and, um, and why our students would be interested in the Heartland model. So Heartland model is really uh, the evolution of when I started practice in 1980 when I graduated. Um, couldn't find a job that guaranteed me $25,000 a year. Um, and so I, I started a small practice in Effingham, Illinois. Uh, again, population 12,000. Uh, did better my first year than I ever anticipated, but I had low expectations. <laughs> um, and the next year I opened up another office. This is 1981 when the prime rate was 21.5%. Um, but I opened up a second practice because my goal was to avoid end up working on our family farm. Uh, where I grew up on a ch as a child. Um, over the next coming years, I opened about a practice per year and began to hire uh, young dentists who I knew in school or, or about my age at that time. And within a few years, I began to figure out that they didn't know the same things I didn't know when I got out of school. They needed to learn the same things that I learned. Um, and. I felt like I could help them and, and subsequent dentists coming into practice and not have to make the same mistakes. I was working 80 hours a week, about 50 hours a week at the chair and another 25 or 30 hours a week. Um, I did that for 17 years. Um, and we grew our practice by that time into 25 locations. I had 21 partners. We were given an opportunity to sell that practice, uh, that group, um, and we did. We sold it to an insurance company. Uh, interesting days back in the late 90s. But our, our model is really uh, predominantly to help support general dentists uh, work in extraordinarily nice facilities, uh, generally in very nice areas, uh, suburbs, et cetera, uh, around the country. Uh, today, Harlan supports around 1,200 locations, about 1,800 dentists in 38 states. Uh, we're growing by adding about 200 locations per year, but they're, they're vastly uh, majority general dentists, uh, and we, again, help support them with the right equipment, uh, the right marketing to allow them to be busy. We have tremendous continuing education um, and do all the other things that uh, a typical practice would have such that, and to me, this is the key value proposition, is that the dentist can focus their time and energy and all the things they need to learn on how to become a better dentist, a better leader within their practice, uh, how to work with their team to accomplish their individual treatment philosophy, accomplish their individual treatment protocols uh, to help serve the communities in which they work in. You know, it makes me think that if I had a farm that I didn't want to go back to, I would be so much better. But actually, it's a great story, and it's um, hard to fathom the amount of work uh, necessary to get to where you've gone. Um, obviously, you are gifted when it comes to dentistry, and, uh, and the, the people who work for you are gifted for working for you. So I think that's a great thing. Um, how does Heartland think about growing their footprint? Uh, are there parts of the country where you're a greater presence than others? Um, and uh, where do you see yourself, the company growing next? Yeah. So. Until 1997, uh, we were only in Illinois uh, and pretty much mostly downstate in Illinois. Um, we then branched into Indiana and Missouri, but in 03, we jumped down to Florida, where I now reside, um, and we've gone from basically zero to about 250 supported practices there um, just in the past decade. Uh, we're adding about 20 locations per year in Florida. So that's probably our fastest growing and it's our largest concentration. But we do new offices. We grow by basically two, three different ways. One way is we, we do de novo. De novo means scratch start is how I called it, uh, practices. Uh, and we do those throughout the country. Um, we do affiliations where uh, typically solo practices or small groups um, would affiliate with Heartland. Um, so we help support them and provide, I think, an array of advantages that most dentists don't yet recognize some of the advantages that we have in, in payers. They probably figure out suppliers, but they probably wouldn't know advantages to, to payers. And the, uh, the third way is, is uh, 
through larger groups uh, that may affiliate with us uh, along the way. But that we, that's how we do grow. We've been doing that and we've been growing about 15 to 20 percent per year for 20 years. So you get to see um, all the different types of dental school uh, graduates. Mm -hmm. um, you get to evaluate them. It's, a lot of them end up working for you. Mm -hmm. um, are dental schools doing enough to prepare graduates to work in the real world? Um, would teaching students to place single implants in a safe space be a valuable uh, tool for them to have when they integrate into a Heartland practice? Yeah. So it is true that we, we have a chance there'll be probably 200 plus students per year um, come to work in a Heartland supported office. So we get a chance over the years to uh, see wh where the typical skills are, the advanced and the not as advanced. Um, the schools do, a, I think they do a good job, particularly with their available resources. Um, we know um, that it's our job, we feel, to take them from where they are and encourage them and support them and, and offer them opportunities to continue to grow uh, from the first day forward. Now, to be clear, uh, maybe only 40% of the doctors who join us are right out of school, but we do, we get experience that with regards to uh, the skill sets that, that students need. Um, a large number need more uh, experience with oral surgery. They need more experience with endodontics. Um, and and uh, we do a survey and certainly a very, very high percentage of students uh, aspire or desire to learn how to place implants. And it's, it's a skill that is the future. And so certainly uh, having students come out of a dental school uh, already having that experience and, and desire to learn to do more uh, and or confidence or lack of fear to you know, try to learn more about it is, is, a, is a big, big plus up, no question. I think you see two different types of students graduating from schools, those that have the fear and those that don't. <laughs> well, and and um, you know, sometimes it's good to have the fear because the oh, fear yeah. does oh. keep you safe sometimes. Yeah. We try to find the middle point where we want them to have the correct fear. Yeah. Respect. And the respect of what they're doing, the respect that they're working on human beings, the respect that uh, they are making changes to people's lives. Yeah. And uh, they're holding a sacred trust, um, you know, whenever they treat a patient, whenever they pick up an instrument. Yeah. Um, at Turo here, we've um, we've pioneered in some ways uh, a path forward with digital dentistry. Um, can you tell us if Heartland um, shares the same outlook, and um, what inroads in digital dentistry are you contemplating or have made? Sure, uh, a lot of a lot of questions. I'll try to remember if I forget them all. Well, forget I, me, I but, can <laughs> repeat them slowly. <laughs> yeah. so it slowly works for me, but but. Uh, <laughs> I agree that that the sacred trust of the patient is is the key, and and for students to, or students or, or new grads or any dentist to continue to enhance their skills, uh, we have a thing called the dental mastery program where they sign up. All it costs is they have to join the Academy of General Dentistry. But a higher percentage of our supported doctors belong have an FAGD than. Uh, dentistry at large. So we, we have a pathway to encourage them to learn all that stuff. Um, digital dentistry is obviously clearly the future um, and what that means has changed uh, over the last 20 years. It used to mean maybe digital x-rays or right. maybe mean you had a computer. But but today uh, we have a digital scanner in uh, every tree, every office, not every treatment room, excuse me, in every office uh, so I, I don't know what percentage, but 100% of our doctors have access to uh, scanning all crowns. Uh, last year, our supported doctors did 50,000 uh, Invisalign cases. So uh, using the Itero scanner for Invisalign is very important. Um, using that for, for, the, for digital labs. We, we have some practices who have uh, milling units, uh, not a lot, but no question, that's still a, a tremendous skill uh, to have. But I think you may also 
the implying, and, and I recognize that the next phase that we have a few offices that do this, but you can't say a lot, but that 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 connect the the uh, cone beam CTs to uh, implants all on X uh, implants and, and how to connect that super precisely to deliver, you know, say, uh, what teeth in a day or teeth next day or something like that and or complex cases. Uh, when oh, I you like that word, huh? <laughs> I, yeah, well, it's, it's just, it's reality. I, I acknowledge I never did any of that. Uh, I tell people I, I, I live vicariously, but, but we uh, are blessed to support some of the very best dentists in, in North America, and uh, I get to see what they do, and it is it is incredible. And I think they're probably pioneers, and over the next 10 years, uh, through digitization and management of that, I think we're gonna see a lot more unbelievable dentistry done more routinely, more commonly in, in a, lot of, a lot of dental offices. So I shared your vicarious living, which was um, I get to do that with the people who work downstairs. Yes. And uh, and you're right. Sometimes the things they come back with are just amazing. Yeah. Um, and they're selfless, and they do it in support of the patient. Um, you know, they have a great belief that dentistry is the place to be. The students have the same belief, and I think Heartland has the same belief as well. And I think on that issue, we're kind of aligned. Um, what would you say to our graduates about their entrance into the real world and what they should expect and um, what they should look forward to? I think what I'd tell any prospective person going to dental school and any person coming out of dental school that it's just an incredible time to be a dentist. Uh, the, the techniques and the technology that we have to deliver uh, effective dental care you know, aesthetics, re, you know, teeth replacements, um, prevention, therapeutics, it's just incredible. I would tell students, uh, you've got a good background, you know you, you know how to learn, you know there's a lot to learn, and, and be open, positive, mentally flexible, that's a key gatekeeper in our, in our world, um, but that you can, you can end up doing whatever it is you choose to do because uh, the public in America has the ability to understand uh, and value comprehensive care. And, and, uh, and if you'll master your skills, technical skills, your leadership skills, um, those two things need to work together to actually accomplish uh, a lot of the care you want to you deliver. One of the things about changing people's lives, I was um, having a discussion with somebody at Three Shape who's in charge of the digital dent uh, digital dentures, yeah. um, and this is not a dentist, but this is somebody a software engineer who pioneered the production and of software that um, allows efficient three D printing of dentures, and his proudest thing is that. Um, while in America, dentures are, you know, still used in a large portion, but all over the world, they're, much, they're used much more significantly. And um, with this software, they're able to produce a denture for about five bucks. Wow. And in the developing world, that really is a game changer to somebody's life. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the three-shape person told me that last year they did 800,000 crowns, but the uh, but the dentures that they did in Africa are much closer to his heart because he knows that those people would have severe trouble eating without them. Yeah, so that's incredible. I, I admit so I wouldn't, the world have, I wouldn't have thought of it that way, but yeah, wow. the world is changing and the the technology is making us better, and more efficient, and, uh, and building a better world, and making yeah. the world a better place. So with that, I want to thank you and Heartland for making the world a better place. Um, there is uh, so much opportunity there, and there's uh, it's just an incredible body of work that you put together over the years. It's hard to understand how it could be done, but it can be done. Often we see dentists who have one practice and are dealing with that full time. But uh, you see the world completely differently, and, uh, and it's a very, very special thing. Well, we've been very blessed. You know, we tell people we're not perfect, but we, we try hard and our batting average is good. But, but I'd 
definitely be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to the you know, thousands of folks at Heartland who are out there every day trying to learn, trying to get better, um, as we all are, um, uh, as, as in a, for, we consider it a journey. We're on a journey, and some of us have been on that journey for 30 years, and some of us have been on that journey for 30 days. But, um, but I do believe that over time, the information sharing um, is in, the rate is increasing rapidly, and that, that is better for society, it's better for dentistry, and it's better for each individual participant in that process. So we're, we're happy and proud of what we do. I, I agree. I think the information sharing lists us all. And you're right, dentistry right now is a great place to be, and we're kind of a reflection of that. Yeah. So thank you, and thank you for coming. And thanks for the invitation, and happy to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah.